we've got a game plan for you called, did your mom tweet it or did Ocho tweet it? <laughs> right, let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to Renee All Day. I'm Renee Paquette. Joining me right now, number five, T. Higgins. The one and only. The one and only. <laughs> How good does it feel to have that number five slapped on the jersey? Do we feel like a new version of T. Higgins? Uh, for sure, you know. Uh, going back to, you know, my old roots, high school days, yeah. boys club days. So, I mean, it definitely feels good. Certainly. No, it, it looks good on you. Does it, do you, like, mentally, did it have any kind of a switch for you? I mean, I know I've heard you speak about it a little bit, but just to, like, move on from the 85, get I mean, back to it. It was just, you know, exciting to get back to my old number. Yeah. Uh, you know, I rep 85 well. You know, yeah, my, you sure my did. first three years wearing it. But, yeah. you know, it's time to get back to the old roots. So. Certainly. Uh, all right, so what feels different for you about this season? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, honestly, for me, you know, I feel like us together as a team is, you know, we just more together and feel like more of a family. And I just feel like it got good things ahead of us. I feel like that has been like the theme for some time. So to imagine you guys just like gelling even more and having mm -hmm. like more of that camaraderie that makes for a, a pretty dangerous team, which you guys have been obviously uh, thus far. Um, if you could go back and talk to Rookie T, what advice are you giving him? It's a lot of advice I would give him, you know. <laughs> okay. uh, so much Rattle a few off. It's so much more that I've learned, you know, just throughout my years playing in the NFL. Um, you know, whether it be, you know, attacking the ball, you know, the right way, um, you know, working a certain release. And the main thing is, you know, eating healthy. Okay. That's the main the diet has changed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, diet has changed, you know. And that, that would probably be the main thing is definitely eat healthy. What is the thing you miss from not eating healthy? Do you still dabble a little bit? I definitely dabble a little bit with the okay. canes, you know. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's number one. But um, really just like a lot of chips. Oh, me and you both. That's my snack. Like, I love chips, so. <sighs> What's your favorite chip? Uh, cool Ranch Doritos. Okay, interesting. I'm more of like I, I like I'm a potato chip gal. Okay, I, I mean I can get down with the the lace, the uh, the sour cream and onion. Oh, sour cream and onion is yeah. good. I like a ruffle sour cream and onion too. Give me a little rich. Okay, okay. What about the Grippos? Do you do the Grippos? I did. My rookie year, I was I was big on them, but then I I ate them so much, I just got tired of them. You burnt yourself out. Yeah. On. I see. Sometimes you feel like you need to do that a little <laughs> bit to like get it out of your system. I've not landed on that, yeah. and I just keep reaching for the chips. Bloating, bring it on. It's what we like. Um, okay, let's talk some shoes for a minute, because I saw the collab that you posted with NFL. Very organized. You got a lot of shoes. I try to be organized. A lot to work with. But my big question is the green off-whites. We're not wearing them. Mm -hmm. We're saving them for a special occasion. In the sneaker world, why are we buying shoes and not wearing them? Talk to me about it. I don't understand. Honestly, for me, um, you know, I wanted those so bad. And, you know, I wear a big size shoe. So sure. And a lot of guys that's, you know, in the league wear my same size. So I guess, you know, You're it doesn't have to be up. in the league. So they, they was all snatched up. So I was finally able to get my hands on them. And I, I'm going to wear them eventually. But right now I just got them on display. And this little <laughs> thing I got in my room is like, oh. it like floats and it spins. And it looks, it's pretty cool. It's like a home decor. It's pretty cool. So Big home decor guy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, I got the, got the jellyfish coming. Listen, we know. We set the little ambiance <laughs> for you. We like to set the scene for you. Okay, so I heard you yesterday. You kind of popped your head in here. Uh, and you said that the jellyfish tank is coming along. Mm -hmm. Where are we at? What needs to happen with the jellyfish? So I got the tank finally. Um, now it's just... How big is the tank? It's like a cylinder. It's, it's about yay high. Oh, it's okay. It's not that so big. So it's not like a wall. No, it's, no, it's not no big crazy thing. Okay. Cheap. <laughs> just a little yeah, guy. Yeah. How uh, many jellyfish are you putting in there? So I'm going to buy three jellyfish. Jellyfish only cost around like 30 bucks oh. each. So oh. yeah, I'm going to just buy like three of those moon jellyfish. So like whatever the light, whatever light it is, the color of the jellyfish oh would my. be. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But um, that's definitely coming along. Got the tank. Now I just got to get it set up. That's where, just the hard part. Where do you acquire the jellyfish? Are they being shipped in or can you yeah, just like go just, down to PetSmart? Go on. Uh, like. Some site on the internet, order them. <laughs> Jellyfish.com. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> what else is going on with the decor of the home? How else do we set the vibe when you're home? It's important to be able to walk through the door mm -hmm. and enjoy your home and enjoy the, the lavishes. Sure. So, um, yeah, for me, uh, I like paintings. 
Oh. So I got a lot of paintings. What kind of paintings? I need some artwork in my house. I got like, Help me out. It's different things, like cartoons, like, mm. but it's like a certain type of painting, like, that this artist that I know. Way. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty okay. cool. Uh, I have like a Nipsey painting. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna have a Michael Jordan painting where he's wearing like these off white shoes, yeah. but the laces, the laces are actual laces. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. Oh. Oh, see, I really need to dabble in the artwork. I keep like, it's hard to pull the trigger to like really decide what you want up on the walls. Yeah. I have a hard time with it. <laughs> they all just sit in my cart and then I don't actually make the purchases. I just think <laughs> about it a lot. Um, okay, so we talked about moving back to number five, how well you've worn number 85. Talk to me about your relationship with Ocho. Mm -hmm. Is he sending lots of texts? Are you guys staying in touch? What's the communication level Oh yeah, at? we stay in touch here and there, you know, um, you know, I tweet something. I see him quote it. <laughs> it it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. I think I well, I tweeted something recently. What did I say? I said something. He was just like he. I don't even know. It was funny, <laughs> but I was like typical Ocho. <laughs> but man, he's a great guy. You know. Um. You know. Before I even when I was first drafted by the Bengals, you know, I asked his blessing. You know, just out of respect. Yeah. I was like, man, I want to wear eighty five. Can I get your respect? You know. He was like, yeah, man, go ahead, man, do your thing. Yeah. And. You know, I was able to do my thing in it, but now it was, just, it was just time for a switch. Yeah. Um, what was the last text that Ocho sent you? I've heard rumors that he kind of will nag on the receivers a little bit. Do you guys, uh, is, is that I, true? I can't, so I'm here and there. Okay. He will, he will. He'll, he'll, he'll talk smack on Twitter, talking about he'll <laughs> lock me, TB, and chase down mm -hmm. in practice and stuff. He asked the Bengals to sign him on a little, like a 10 day or something. <laughs> Come in and just, just a little something, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's a clown, man. He's I love a character it. for sure. Um, your your youth football program. Talk to me about that. It seems like things are moving along quite well as, mm -hmm. as they would for a man like you. Yeah, um, you know it was very big for me. You know, going back home, being able to you know put on my first annual camp. Yeah, you know, um, had a lot of kids. I think I had around like two hundred and fifty oh kids gosh. come out. Mm -hmm. Whoa! And man, just it's you know it's a blessing at the end of the day. You yeah. know, be able to come from where I'm from and, you know, put do something for the kids that, you know, I wasn't able to do yeah. when I was younger. So um, definitely it was an answer. Definitely what, inspired me. So what are some of those like conversations that you're able to have with those kids and to be able to give them those opportunities that you weren't able yeah, to have? Um, it was a lot. The conversation more went like, I appreciate you for doing this for us. And uh, I want to be in your shoes one day. Yeah. And I was like, you know, just giving them, you know, great advice. Yeah. So. Just not those green off whites. Yeah. Not those shoes. Nah, you don't need, a, you don't need, all, <laughs> you don't need, you don't need the shoes. We don't need those yet. <laughs> we'll get to them. We'll get to that. Um, you seem like you stay very like calm, cool and collected. Mm. What is that about? Have you always been like that? Is oh. it like giving yourself a mantra in the mirror every day? What goes down? Yeah. Well, I've always been like that since yeah. I was yay high. You yeah. Know? And, um. You know, I feel like, you know, that's that's just the way I, I like to go about things because yeah. nobody can ever read me, you know, like Tricky. even like even in games, like when say a guy talking, talking smack to me, I just look at him. I either smirk or, you know, just walk <laughs> off and then just go do my thing. How do you feel about the guys that do do the trash talking that have like more of that in their like tool belt? I mean, I don't blame them for it. Yeah. I mean, if you got it in your tool belt, I say do use it. it, use it. You know use what I'm saying? You got to use. I mean. It's just how they go about things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so as I'm getting ready for this interview, I'm going deep in the Twitter, deep in the Instagram, and I can't help but see that you took a photo with The Undertaker. I come from the wrestling world. Oh, my God. Are you a wrestling fan? Oh, for sure. We, yeah. Me, me uh, Joe Mixon, Tyler, and Chase, we just had a full conversation about wrestling yesterday <laughs> at practice. <laughs> yeah, which is we have a show coming up soon. You got to come. Really? Come down, yes. Where is it? Where is it going uh, we're going to be at, um, uh, what's the arena called now? U.S. Bank. Okay. Heritage Bank, U.S. Yeah, Bank, yeah, changed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys have to come. Definitely. Come down. Uh, well, it's not, I, I don't think wrestling's the same as it used to be, though. Sure, sure. We I mean, have our but, nostalgia. but I do like, I do like one wrestler now. Who? I like Jake Paul. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> I like his move. I like the moves that he do. <laughs> I like the moves that he do. I mean, it's just, he's like doing all this athletic backflips and all types it's of off the road stuff. It's very impressive. Yeah, it is. So 
As much as you can talk a little trash on the guys that come in that have like a celebrity name for themselves or an athlete in another yeah. in another program, they move into pro wrestling. But I will say he does put in the work. He puts on a good match. Yeah, he does. Because because I have a, a best friend that actually tried out for wrestling. He was like, bro, this stuff is actually harder than training camp. Like, right. you like, it's ridiculous. I mean, so even I when you look it, at, you know, like, at the end somebody of the like Pat McAfee from what he was able to do. I mean, he actually he came in and did a really good job. Yeah. He's great on commentary obviously but yeah he did a really good job too so i don't know maybe we'll get you out there we'll get you in the oh, ring no, no, see no, how no, it feels no, no, no. just to try it just i might do something it. like uh i like, who did it was it steph curry that did something oh maybe it was some it was it was a professional athlete that that did something with the wrestling scene there's always and guys yeah coming and just i thought that was pretty like, cool i, can do I feel it. like i could do something like that yeah <laughs> one of my favorites was when snoop dogg came in to do it and to see his long lanky ass jumping what? off the third rope like dropping an elbow <laughs> running the ropes i did see that on twitter that was funny impressive <laughs> to say the least okay well we'll get you down to some wrestling it must happen um, okay, moving on from wrestling. There's no natural segue to go from wrestling to talking about your mom. Uh, but your relationship with your mom, you guys, of course, mm -hmm. are very close, have a great relationship. What does it mean for you to be able to have her by your side during your whole career, having her out there in the stands, being loud and proud for you? It means everything to me simply because, you know, what she's been through, yeah. you know, with her life. And, um, you know, for me, I just want her to live stress-free, um, just to be able to enjoy the rest of her life and, mm -hmm. you know, just... Just cheer me on. At the end yeah. of the day, you know, it, man, me and my mom's bond is like no other, you know. And Gotta love your mom. Yeah, at the end of the day, I love you, mom. Best nugget of wisdom that you've got from your mom? <sighs> Don't drop the ball. <laughs> mom's <laughs> she, uh, yeah. she She hates when I drop the ball, man. She She's on me more than anybody that I know. Yeah. It, it is crazy. What is the nicest thing you've done for your mom? Um, I got her a house and a car. That's nice. Yeah, uh, she was really stoked about that. She, that's really the, really all she wanted. Yeah. She she don't really care for all the, you know, materialistic things. Obviously, I get it for. Her. Yeah. She's just like, you all didn't right. have to get this for me. Thank you, son. But thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> rock it. On. She she came to the game uh, last year after I got her a bag. She was like, my bag, huh? <laughs> like I love it. That's a little something out there. Um. Again, getting ready for this interview and reading the, the article that you wrote about her for the Players' Tribune. How was that for you, kind of putting pen to paper to honestly, put all that out? Honestly, for me, it was tough. Yeah. You know, it was so, it was so much emotion going into it um, and just thinking and, and thinking about the things that happened over time. Yeah. You know, being able to, because we actually talked about me playing in the Super Bowl yeah. long ago. Crazy. And to see it happen and to see her in the stands cheering me on was just I, I even shed a tear yeah. at the time, and it was just, you know, surreal. So Yeah, very, very cool. Um, okay, we've got a game plan for you called, did your mom tweet it or did Ocho tweet it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just pull them up here. Oh, okay, yes, we've okay, got our okay, props. Okay. you got to give me the, which face it belongs to. <laughs> this is funny. Got your mom and Ocho. All First right. one. Man, I'm so ready for some football. Football emoji. That was mama. That was mama. <laughs> <laughs> the real 85 just f scored. <laughs> oh, oh so I seen that tweet. <laughs> if the ball touch your hands, catch it. Yeah. <laughs> That's that was easy. <laughs> that one we know. Come on, defense, get in the game, shake their shoulder pads, shysty. Yep. That's something that sounds like something she'll say. <laughs> Bengals are winning the division again and we'll make another run at the Lombardi. We have T. Higgins, Boyd, and Chase. <laughs> that was Ocho. Come on, nah. Come on, Bengals. Please, prayer emoji. One more time? You want it? Oh, one more time. Come on, Bengals. Please, with the prayer hands emoji. No, it was <gasps> Ocho. It was Chad. <laughs> Um, all right, now to close things out here with uh, some more jellyfish facts. You're a jellyfish guy. They're coming in. The tank is coming together. We've got the ambiance. How much do you know about jellyfish? True or false? Jellyfish can glow in the dark. False. 
No, true. Oh. Get a little black light and you guys have a real party. I just talked about the neon light with the moon jellyfish. Well, I knew that. True. Yeah, there we go. They've got a bioluminescence organs that emit blue or green I light. I knew that. I knew that. Jellyfish have three brains, true or false? <laughs> Can we see any brains in there? That's true. They have no brains. Oh, my God. Yeah, real dum-dums. They have no brains at all. <laughs> Um, 5,000 people are stung by jellyfish every year, true or false? 5,000? Yeah. I do know a lot of people get stung by jellyfish, so I'm going to have to say true. It's actually false. I don't know. Oh. I don't know <laughs> about a jellyfish. I kind of was throwing you curveballs, oh though, God. because it's 150 million people that are stung by jellyfish each year, so it's like 1,000 oh. people since we've been talking. Oh. It's a lot. I, that, I, I, that was mean of me. Yeah, I set you up. Oh, yeah. I set you up. I, do, um, I did know a lot of people get stung by yeah. jellyfish. Though. Jellyfish are edible. That's false. True. Ew. <laughs> I can't Ooh. imagine what they taste like. They can't taste like much of anything. What? I think they have to like really be cleaned and you like strip out some of what like, are you, whatever. What are, you, they, what are you eating? I don't know. I, I, so I, as I was looking this up, I, I want to say maybe similar to like a calamari. Nah. I wouldn't do it mm -hmm. either. I'm not interested. Um, if you were stung by a jellyfish, what do you do? You get stung by a jellyfish. Is it is it true you're supposed to get like the pee? Yes. Yeah. Pee or vinegar, but vinegar. pee is usually uh, more readily available. I would, I would definitely use vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, depending on how bad it hurt, and there's no vinegar, I don't know, you do what you gotta do. Um, and a group of jellyfish is called a smack, a bloom, or a truckload. Smack. Yes, true. A smack or a bloom, both apply. See, you know your jellyfish. A little bit. You know them. Just a tad. Are you gonna name the jellyfish? Oh yeah. Yeah. What have we got? I don't. I have nothing yet. You got to meet them first. See if yeah. they have any kind of personality. Yeah. See, you got to see how they floating around. You know. <laughs> see what they got. See if one stays at the, the top, one at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna see. <laughs> well, very excited for the jellyfish. Excited to see you out there, number five. Excited to see what you guys bring to the table this season. Really pumped to watch you guys. Thank you. T Higgins, everybody, <laughs> the jellyfish king. That's me. <laughs>